the years I've been at UCLA, uh, most recently, this is my first year as department chair, I've been honored to work with many remarkable colleagues, really phenomenal students, and distinguished alumni. And uh, actually kind of surprising to me, I don't know why it, it was surprising, but one of the more, most satisfying aspects of my job as department chair has in fact been in connecting with alumni who have changed the world in important and often un unexpected ways. And uh, today's keynote speaker is really an excellent example of this. A Detroit City native, Dak Shepard, received his bachelor's degree with Latin honors in anthropology here at UCLA in 2000. <laughs> He's still celebrating. Um, while attending UCLA, Dax also began training at the Groundlings Theater for Improv and Sketch Comedy. As it turned out, this dual training in anthropology and improv proved to be a potent mix, helping him to land his first major TV role in Punked in 2003, which is actually an aspect of Dax's filmic history that has had me, to be honest, just a little nervous about what might happen <laughs> at any minute here today. Um, since that time, Dax has appeared in numerous films, including Without a Paddle, Idiocracy, Employee of the Month, Baby Mama, The Judge, and This is Where I Leave You. He's also written, directed, and starred in the movies Chips, Hit and Run, and Brothers Justice. Dax is also well known for his role on the network television drama Parenthood, for which he received a 2015 People's Choice Award nomination. Dax will next star in Fox's upcoming comedy pilot, Bless This Mess. Finally, incorporating uh, some of his anthropological interests and skill sets, he's also recently launched um, a podcast titled Armchair Expert, in which he speaks with and interviews some of the most iconic creative personalities around the world. So, Please help to give me a warm and proud welcome to one of our very own former students, Dak Shepard, our 2018 Department of Anthropology commencement speaker. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's very flattering. Uh, as I stand here, I guess I didn't anticipate how many parents it takes to get 200 people to graduate. So just you guys, good job. You did it. Uh, so, as, as uh, he said, my name is Dak Shepard, and I am living proof that a degree in anthropology can lead to great riches, <laughs> just not in the field of anthropology. <laughs> now, tradition would uh, insist that, as your commencement speaker, I should bestow upon you a giant gleaming pearl of wisdom, something you can take with you as you embark on this next phase of your life. Uh, unfortunately, I am the wrong guy for that. Uh, I'm much better suited to tell you what not to do and how not to behave. So instead, I will urge you to use the many pearls of wisdom you've already received here at UCLA. You're all anthro majors, which I think says all the right things about you. It means you really did come here to learn because there's almost zero real world application for this degree. <laughs> you were interested in why and how humans are the way they are. And I think as a human, those are among the most profound questions we can ask. When we study anthropology, we discover the massive, unavoidable impact evolution and culture have on our species. We evaluate these forces with a clinical, dispassionate view. We cling to cultural relativism, or at least we did in 2000. If you guys have abandoned that years ago, you just bear with me. We cling to cultural relativism in order to prevent judgment from getting in the way of our learning and understanding. We watch old films of the Yanomamo whacking each other over the head with huge clubs and think, bingo, ceremonial display of courage. We see Frodo, the alpha male chimpanzee, running maniacally through the forest, beating the shit out of every single tree, branch, and chimp he can get his hands on. And we note, ah oh, yes, Frodo has very effectively displayed his dominance. The social hierarchy of the troop has been firmly enforced. Check. We did that. We stayed neutral so we could understand, or at least most of us did that. And now as a result, we have a healthy respect for the power of evolution and culture. 
The mingling of these two instruments explains nearly every little peculiarity of our human emotions, desires, and behaviors. And now that you understand this, I'm going to advise you that you put cultural relativism on the shelf for a bit and turn a fierce, judgmental eye onto yourselves. I want you to be aware that each one of us is equally at the mercy of our culture and evolution, as are the Anamami or Frodo the chimpanzee. And we need to police ourselves rigorously as to not be victims of these forces. We evolved in an environment where food was scarce and predators meant business. And because of this, my brain will instruct me to eat nine pieces of pizza in one sitting because God knows when we will bump into another pizza tree in full bloom. <laughs> and when Halloween rolls around, my great ape hardware will advise me to consume 27 bite-sized Snicker bars because winter's coming, food will be limited, and I will need the extra calories. <laughs> but of course, winter is not coming, guys, nor will food be limited. I live in California, Postmates is a thing, and Snickers bars are sold year round. So I need to quiet these voices because these are vestigial impulses. They served us at one time, but now they need to be closely monitored. Historically, we have lived in multi-member groups and our biology and our culture reflect that. Hierarchy was paramount. It controlled our access to food, shelter, mates, and in the saddest case for the Japanese macaques, access to the hot tub where the party is. <laughs> my ranking, where I fit in in my group, is probably my greatest preoccupation, even when I'm totally unaware of it. If I go to a concert at the Hollywood Bowl and my seats are in the seventh row, I can't help but look at the people in rows one through six with extreme envy. I tell myself that I'm jealous of their proximity to the stage because you can see better from there and hear better from there, but that is BS. I can see and hear plenty fine from the seventh row, and I know this is BS because I have a degree in anthropology. I know that what those rows really represent is status, social ranking. Those seats cost more, so the people in them presumably have more means, more cargo, access to better mates, and a higher fecundity rate. Those six rows make me feel less than. Why? Because I'm a stupid social primate who cares about that stuff. And when I go on Instagram and I notice that a fellow male actor of comparable talent and sex appeal has three times as many followers as I do, my stomach sinks. Cortisol floods my system. I'm powerless over it. It's physiological. I infer that I must be a zeta male or gamma male at best. This other actor of relative talent and sex appeal is most certainly getting way more grooming than me. Just because we have studied it and understand it does not mean we have transcended it. And that's what I want to beg of you, to transcend our apeness. Be mindful of which aspects of our culture are progress and which are reactions to outdated insecurities over food, safety, and rank. We have so much vestigial wiring, us, them, in-group, out-group, tribalism, and we have to fight it. We have to be mindful and push back. We have to take all of this understanding that we got at this wonderful school and use it for positive cultural growth. We are pretty much stuck with our biology or our hardware, but our culture, the software we're running, has the potential for limitless updates. It's a system we get to guide, and it has the power to mute our fears and amplify our hope. And the number one thing, the message I want to scream at all of you with a bullhorn, stop comparing yourself to other people. The only person you should ever be comparing yourself to is a previous version of yourself. Are you growing? Are you getting healthier? Are you getting stronger? Liberate yourself from the monkey hierarchy. There are seven billion people in our group, so it is safe to assume that, assume that no one here is ever going to achieve alpha status. And remember, when you're in a group or at work or in a social setting, and someone has been identified as the jerk, the loser, or the a-hole, simply acknowledge why it feels so good to gossip about them with your peers. You're still free to hate them, but just admit that the reason it feels so good is because that person has been ranked the lowest. And in a world where we are constantly struggling to know where we are in the pecking order, it is a great relief to know at least we are not last. Use your anthro superpowers for good. Use them most on yourself. You deserve transcendence. I'm a father of two, I'm married, I've succeeded for the most part at a job I dreamt of, but tied with all of those things is my pride for having graduated from this school.
with a degree in anthropology. <laughs> I am so, so proud of that, I can't tell you. And not by because, by comparison, it is a much better school than USC academically. <laughs> That's not why. It's not because ranking-wise, by a long shot, we're way superior. <laughs> but because I worked incredibly hard to get in here. And I worked incredibly hard while I was here. And when I compare myself to the earlier version of myself who hadn't gone here, I see a huge improvement. I hope all of you carry that same pride with you as you leave here and start climbing the next mountain. You worked so hard. You expanded your mind and you actively tried to make yourself better. And that last pursuit, making yourself better, is the one that's worth pursuing long after you leave here. I wish you all luck in that journey and I'm so proud to stand among you.